In this question, we are required to describe an experiment to find the density of copper tannings using a density bottle and kerosene. This experiment consists of four basic steps, and they are as follows. In the first step, we determine the mass of an empty density bottle. In the second step, we fill the density bottle with kerosene and find the total mass of the bottle and kerosene. From these two measurements, we can determine the mass of the kerosene that fills the density bottle. And if we know the density of kerosene, we can find the volume of the kerosene which fills the bottle. Why is this important? By finding the volume of kerosene that fills the bottle, we will be finding the internal volume of the density bottle itself. So this is the main aim here, to determine the volume of the kerosene that fills the density bottle, and by extension, determine the internal volume of the density bottle itself. In the third step, we put copper tannings in the density bottle and determine the total mass of the density bottle and the copper tanning. Again, from this step, we are able to determine the mass of the copper tannings. How do we do this? Look at M3. M3 is the mass of the copper tannings and the density bottle. M1 is the mass of the empty density bottle. So by subtracting M1 from M3, we will get the mass of the copper tannings. Why do we need the mass of the copper tannings? Remember, we want the density of copper tannings. In order to calculate the density of copper, we need to find the mass of the copper and its volume. So the challenge here is how do we determine the volume or the space occupied by the copper tannings? This is solved in the fourth step. This step is a continuation of step three. So we just need to pour in kerosene into the container in step 3 so that by finding M4 we will be determining the mass of the density bottle, copper tannings and the kerosene that we have just added. From this step it's obvious that we can be able to calculate the mass of the kerosene that we have just added. How is this possible? Look at step 3. M3 is the mass of copper tannings and the density bottle, while M4 is the mass of the copper tannings, the density bottle, and kerosene. So by finding the difference between M4 and M3, we will be getting the mass of the kerosene above the copper tannings. Why do we need this mass of the kerosene above the copper tannings? Remember the aim of step 4. We are trying to determine the volume of copper tannings. We realize that if we can be able to find the volume of this empty space here, then subtract this volume of the empty space from the total volume of the density bottle, which we already know. Remember? The reason why we were finding the mass M2 the mass of the kerosene here, which is M2 minus M1, and then we divide that mass of kerosene by the density of kerosene, was to help us to determine the volume of the kerosene that fills the density bottle. And by extension, we found the volume, the internal volume of the density bottle. So that we know. If now we can find the volume occupied this empty space here above the copper tannings and subtract that volume from the total volume of the density bottle, we will get the volume of the copper tannings. That is what we want. And that is why we fill up this space with a liquid whose density we know, which is kerosene. So we fill it up with the kerosene. 
so that by finding the difference between M4 and M3, we will be able to determine the mass of kerosene above the copper tannins. This mass here. So M4 minus M3 gives us the mass of the kerosene above the copper tannins. If now we divide this mass of the kerosene here by the density of kerosene, we will be able to get the volume of the kerosene above the copper tannins. The volume of the kerosene above the copper tannins. If we find the volume of the kerosene above the copper tannins, it will be equal to the volume of the empty space above the copper in step 3. This empty space here. And after finding the volume of this empty space, if we subtract that volume of the empty space from the total volume or from the internal volume of the density bottle, we will find the volume of copper tannins. So in symbols, the steps are as follows. Step 1, we find the mass of the kerosene in the density bottle and that will be given by M2 minus M1. The volume of the kerosene in the bottle, which is equal to the volume of the density bottle itself, is equal to the mass of the kerosene divided by density of kerosene. Mass of kerosene is M2 minus M1. Density of kerosene is 0 0.8. So the volume of kerosene in the density bottle, which is equal to the volume of the bottle, is given by this expression. In the next step, we want to determine the mass of copper tannins in the density bottle. And this we have already seen is M3 minus M1. We just need to subtract the mass of the empty density bottle from this combination and we'll get the mass of copper. Next step is to get the mass of kerosene above the copper. This mass of kerosene above the copper tannins, it is M4 minus M3. The next step is volume of kerosene above the copper. The volume of this kerosene here above the copper. Because we have already seen that if we find this volume, we'll be finding the volume of the space above the copper in step 3. Which is important to enable us to find the volume of copper tannins. So the next step is to find the volume of copper tannins. Which is equal to the volume of the bottle minus the volume of kerosene above the copper. And we have seen that the volume of the bottle is M2 minus M1 divided by 0 0.8. It's here. While the volume of kerosene above the copper is M4 minus M3 divided by 0 0.8. The LCM is 0 0.8. And we find that the expression becomes M2 minus M1 minus M4. And then minus minus M3 becomes plus M3. And of course, the LCM is 0 0.8. In the next step, we now want to calculate the density of copper by mass of copper divided by volume of copper. And we have already found the mass of copper. It's M3 minus M1. While the volume of copper is given by this expression here, M2 minus M1 minus M4 plus M3 divided by 0 0.8. And rearranging these values, we find that the density of copper will be given by this expression here, M3 minus M1, the, all these divided by M2 minus M1 minus M4 plus M3 times the density of kerosene. This value here is the density of the liquid which is used in the experiment.